So there we are. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, we've got a special guest here by Jack Dodds. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, I've actually got a couple of questions actually for you. Um, because I, I I was thinking of them actually when I was out. Uh, how did you actually become a Sunderland supporter, Jack? Well, um, well, I've been probably about five years, six years old. Uh, my dad took us to the stadium a lot. Uh, went for a few games. Um, I think we got tickets off someone at the time. Um, you know, like when someone has a season ticket, but they're going on holiday or something like that. Um, went to three or four games over a, a couple of years. And then, no, actually, I think we went to three or four games in the season just before Steve Bruce took over. And then I ended up getting a season ticket uh, when Steve Bruce took over and Darren Ben came in, things like that. And I think I went there about three or four games in that season. And, and from that point on, I've, I've always supported Sunderland. And it's, it's been the only real club for me. Yeah, it's the same here. You know, I, I even started the, well, supporting the club, actually, I think, when Bruce was in charge. I don't think I yeah. went. In, I don't think I went to any Bruce's games. I think the first game I went to was under Martin O'Neill. I think it was. It's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> oh, aye, it was a while ago. Like, yeah, it was. Uh, uh, what actually got you making your YouTube channel uh, slash podcasts? Well, it goes a long way back, really. Um, I guess it starts with the foreman of the YouTube channel SFC fan TV, which <laughs> uh, your good friend Michael got involved with straight away. And I, I was a, a big fan of the channel from 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 day one really. Um watched 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 all the all the live shows and all the interviews after the game. Uh, and there was a point when I had a, an interest in getting involved really early on, but I didn't in the end. Um I'm not sure why I was just a bit hesitant. I think maybe to, to go on camera and and talk and I maybe I was a bit concerned. Um, about you know, it's, it's, I think with this, with me age as well at the time, I just thought I'll just hold off and you can get involved another time. Um, and then I still always wanted to go on and be interviewed. Um, by by Sean or Philly or Jacob, whoever was whoever's doing it. I think Sean became the main reporter, but Jacob and Philly did it at the start as well. I think. Um, and I never had time. So I used to always go to work straight after the game. I used to have to run more or less from from the stadium to work. I used to start work quarter past five at uh, the pub in the town. Um, and then all of a sudden this season comes and that's not happening anymore. I'm watching the games from home. Yeah, um, the I was, <laughs> yeah, I was. It, it's awful. Yeah, I was. Um, but I remember I was. I think it was the Charlton game with Joe Nil Nil. It might be. It was really early in the season, um, and I was just sat watching the game in the house, um, and I thought, oh, Sean will be doing these interviews in the town. So I thought, oh, I'll, I'll go down and speak to him, um, and I and I and I did. Um, and I think it was because I had nothing to do for the rest of the day, really. So I went down and uh, spoke, spoke to Sean, got, did, did, did an interview, and uh, I quite liked it. And then I think from there, I, I did a few more. And then, obviously, I, I wanted to get get involved a bit more with the channel. And um, I think I think Philly was just set on on, on the, the people that we had at the channel. He didn't really want to include anyone else at that time. Um, and I ended up getting involved in Fans React. Uh, the channel Paul runs a little bit. Yeah. Did a few stuff on there, but I ended up um, thinking really, I was like, actually, I would prefer to do my own thing. Um, and that's, I would have noticed, respect to Paul, you know, I still got really well with Paul now. Uh, so I'm still involved with that channel already in a way. I just kind of want to have something of my own as well, where I was completely not leave, start to finish. It, it, it was mine. Um, so I could take it in the exact direction that I wanted to. And Paul would have let us do that, don't get us wrong. But I kind of, I like the idea of having something that that was, that was mine, that, that I could be like, you know, I've, I've built this up. Um, I'm not sure why, to be honest. I, I guess I just I like the, the feeling of like you know I, I was a bit more in control. I mean, don't guys wrong, Paul. You know I can't put it into words how open he was and how you know you can do whatever you want. But I just thought it would be easy if I did it on mine. Um, so that's why I started it really, and then it's just went from strength to strength there. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> uh, what's your thoughts on the season so far? Well, it's um, it's been an up and down, hasn't it? Really, obviously, we started off quite well. Really, after that awful first game, we picked up in form, and um, yeah, you know, I, 
we had a, a good spell. We're keeping under clean sheets. Uh, weren't creating many chances, but we're scoring just about enough goals. And then the form dipped and they got worse and worse and worse. Um, Johnson's came in, the form hasn't really picked up, but I think we just need to get a kind of a set formula going. Um, and, and that should hit us, get us hitting, hitting the right form. You know, if we can have this kind of r- roughly a set formation and a set team, that can be adaptable and changeable and have a plan B and a plan C. And the players kind of know what, know what they're doing they're on board, which I do think Johnson will get across one day. I think we will hit that 10 to 15 game run of great form and we can climb the table. It's been a really awkward season so far, to be honest. It's been really touchy turvy. And I, I don't blame. Lee Johnson for the, the start that he's had it hasn't been amazing a lot of fans are blaming him but look, look at the break he had over Christmas he came into a squad that was clearly a very low morale there was a lot of problems in the squad um, and, um, and, and you know it's, he's not had an easy you know, the transfer window hasn't maybe exactly the way he wanted to I think we, we, we brought some, some good players in but he had a lot of work to do in the transfer window and I think we've done it quite well but there was more players I would have liked, liked us to add um, as I say, I think going forward, we just kind of need to, we just we need to get a, a system going, a, a formula to win games, um, and hopefully, you know, with that 10, 15 game, you can get on a 10, 15 game run where we win loads of games. I think the key is keeping clean sheets. If you can keep a clean sheet, you, can, you know, you only nick a goal and you, you've, you've won the game. And if you don't, at least you get away with a point. Um, you know, if you're conceding goals at all of a sudden, score winning the game becomes a heck of a lot harder. Um, so I think that, that's all we need to do going forward really yeah I was actually going to ask you on the signings because I'm actually happy with the signings Johnson's actually brought in you know I actually thought with us getting Johnson I thought we would have get um, Anton Semeni over the game back possibly yeah yeah with the connection, like connection of Johnson I would like to see Anton Semenyo come back because I think we need a lot we need pace up front that's one thing we're lacking um, and I think Semenya would have, would have brought us. I would have been up in the idea, but I think he's getting a lot of game time in Bristol City. We did bring in a pacey striker, but we did bring in a, a pacey winger who's really impressed us. Jordan and Jordan Jones looks fantastic so far. And I, I really hope he can kind of get five to ten games uh, uninterrupted in the team to really settle in and, and find his feet. Um, I was quite I was quite happy with the signing of Jake Vaughan. I know he didn't have the best debut, but I'm just putting it down to him being a bit nervous. He's only 20 year old. I think it's one, one of his uh, very first professional games. He, you know, he's unfamiliar with the kind of setup Johnson was going with the four triple two and having kind of the winger in front of you are almost a, a bit further inside. It's going to take him time to get used to it. And, you know, it's going to take him time to adapt to the level he's at now. Um, so I was, you know, I was a little bit um, disappointed with that, but I was overall happy with his sign. And um, obviously Carl Winchester, I, I don't really know why we brought him in. I can't really say what he, what else, what else he brings that led bit of scouring power. Dobson, who went on loan, don't. Um, as for that, it was another signing. It's it slipped my mind. <laughs> um, Ross Stewart. Ross Stewart. That's it. Yes, just because <laughs> not played yet. Yeah, he's. Um, I don't know what I think. Like, he has got the best return uh, for goals so far this season. But um, I th- you know, he, he's been one. He's been playing that position, and two. If you look at the return, Charlie White had. Uh, not too, not you know, not too long ago, and then all of a sudden, Johnson's kind of found a system for him, and it's working. So hopefully it will be a similar story with with Ross Stewart. Really, um, I th- I'm a little bit frustrated that we've decided to bring in a target man and not because I think as, as much as White is, is a poetry, he's not a target man. He's, he's got the similar attributes. He's quite slow and sluggish. I would like to see someone a little bit different, as it, maybe a Semenyo type player. You know, maybe we couldn't bring him in, but someone similar, just one with a bit of pace to um, to, to to get us going. Do you not think he's brought Ross Stewart in just in case White gets injured? That's a, it's a fair shout, actually, but even still, I would have rather as well with someone a little bit different. And and then, you know, you can just change change system and you can play them up front together as well. You know, I, I, I do think that's a fair point. You know, if White does get injured, he's, you know, he's, he's a fairly similar player, but would, would it still be nice to just bring someone else in as well? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you've been asked this, but what was your thought of actually Phil Portance and getting sacked from us? Um, well, I think at the time it was probably the right time. A lot of people know I, I defended Phil Parkinson for, for quite a while. I think he got a lot more stick than he deserved. Um, but I think it was the right time to go in the end when he did get when he did get the sack. He was his, his time was coming to an end, and I think to me it was you know the final straw. Do you know what I mean? Um, 
in yeah it was it was it was the final so it was it was the right time from the go um you know it was it was things like the late substitutions uh it was you know it, it started to get us and I think I started to realize really he's never going to change the system he's never he's never going to consider even going to fought the back even for just a couple of games he's we were getting tactically figured out and he, and he wasn't finding a way to cope with it and when you do that as a manager you, you're asking for the sack really so I think it was the right time for him to go at the time um, I, I, as I say I, I, I still said I would, I would like to give him one more game but I think looking back really it was clear the right was on the wall and he, he was he was too stubborn as a manager yeah I, I didn't I think that I think the game that turned for me is the MK Don's game mm, yeah I think I think I was a little bit late in that. It was Doncaster, I think. Or, or, no, it wasn't Doncaster. It might have actually been Fleetwood. He's very last game, but the, the, I remember. I think I think it was Fleetwood. He's very last game. I was like, oh, you just I, I can't I can't back him anymore. I tried, I tried, but I just I couldn't back him anymore. But MK Dons was a really frustrating one as well. I was I was annoyed after that. <laughs> Me, you're not the only one. <laughs> no, I, I think everyone was. Yeah, uh, are you pleased we've got Lee Johnson? Because yeah, you know, the other managers we were. Yeah, we were talking to, but are you pleased we've got Johnson? Yeah, he's. Um, I think the time I wanted the Cowley brothers in would have been my number one choice. Um, but I think Johnson's, uh, Paul Cook as well was up there as well. But I think Johnson's a, a decent choice. You look at his history, what he's done since he's came into management, you kind of really knock that. You know, his time at Oldham, his time, it was great. His time at Barnes, it wasn't fantastic. But then he went on to uh, Bristol City, did a, did, a, did a fantastic job there, cracking. Um, and uh, you know, hopefully you can you can just continue to to replicate that uh, at Sunderland. I, as I say, I don't think he's had it easy to be honest. So I, I, I don't think you can really assess him. I don't because I don't he, he's, he's not he's not had a, a normal start. You know, we've either been playing two games a week or had a had a two week break. You know, like it's, he's not had that normal kind of just a game on a Saturday for a while. You know, he's he's he's, he's really he's been thrown into the deep end. So I think he's struggling really. Um, He's, he's, yeah. he's struggling to get, get, get his ideas across. Um, but I do believe in him. I think if you just give him enough time, I, I, you know, I'm impressed with what I've seen. I, I like how um, how, he, how honest he is and his, his, his presses and how he seems to be so forward-thinking and really get his ideas across. You know, he's changed formation a few times already and I think he's trying to figure out the players and how to get the best out of them as individuals to work in a team and Parkinson didn't really do that. So I am, I am really looking forward um, to what he can do and I, I'm, I'm relatively confident that it might not be this season it might be next season but I'm, re- I'm really confident that if you just give him enough time and give him the, the players the, the players that he wants that he will get something going for us that, that takes us up and I think he'll, to be honest with you I think if he takes us up he'll do a good job in the championship as well I don't think the COVID outbreak actually helped him no I did well, I think it hindered, hindered him because he was you know he, he could have used that kind of 10 day spell to get his ideas and his points across but he, you know he hasn't he, uh, he, he didn't get the opportunity to yeah, um, I'm going to bring this up actually because I've just seen it today. Grant Ledbetter is actually he's doing a charity at the moment it, yeah. for I think it's for the uh, Middlesbrough coach uh, for his family. What do you think? Um, to be honest, I don't really know what it's about. I just I see him on Instagram, shared it. I, I had a little look and it looked as if he was like selling things off to try and raise money, but um. No, any, anything charitable is great, you know. And I, you know, um, Leopard looks like a, a a lad with a heart of gold. So, um, so no, it's yeah, that, um, brilliant from brilliant from him, really. Yeah, and for anybody else that doesn't know, he, he uh, Leopard is actually doing a charity for, um, he's raising money and awareness for Graham Lee, the wife of the under twenty three le- uh, lead coach Graham Lee. That's what he's doing it for. That's good. I, I didn't really know much. I didn't look into it too much. Like, yeah, uh, I've just seen that great club club legend Grant Leppard's raising money and awareness for Graham Gemma Lee, actually, the wife of our under twenty three coach Graham Lee, and her fight against brain cancer. That's what it's for. All right, that's yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good thing I raised money for. Them. Yeah. The, the, that's all actually I've actually wrote down, but uh well I was gonna say a score prediction for tomorrow, but <laughs> um I, I think I think I've been asked this a few times. I think I yeah I went with two one. Mm. Do you actually think you'll turn it round? 
Johnson. You know, like from the performance on Saturday, do you think you'll... Oh, uh, I don't know. I think the performance on Saturday is just, you're looking at fine margins. Um, you know, it's it fell off for 15 to 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes in the game. And that's that's when it cost us for me those few silly defensive errors and it really, really hurt us. It's just about, as I say, it's about those fine margins. I think the way to solve that is maybe getting Deion Sanderson involved in the defensive set a few times at full-back. Left-back, he looks great. As I say, fine margins, we just... If, if we can fix those tiny little errors, I think we'll be perfectly fine. But I don't think Shrewsbury are, are as much of a threat going forward as MK Dons. They've only really got that Cha- Chaplin, Cha- Chapman, the kind of attacking midfielder. If you can take him out of the game, if you can just kind of man mark him, and if he can't do anything, I, I can't see them. Um, I can't see them uh, causing us many problems, really. Especially if we've got a Mark Donald love as well. He's with them. Ah, exactly. Um, <laughs> you forgot about him. <laughs> no, he, you know, he, he, he could be a, an area for us to look to look to exploit. You know, we know he's not the best, so so why not use that? Yeah. The- It'd be interesting uh, what Johnson actually does because, to be honest, after that game on Saturday, I, I said to myself, jo- 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 uh, John- Johnson will have to start um, Jones on Tuesday. Yeah, I definitely think he's got. I think you know, I definitely think he's got to start. I mean, he looks to me as if he could be one of our best players going forward, and he's got something that no one else has got, and that's just raw pace. Diamond has got it to be fair, and with Jones, it's, it's just just to another level. Um, and I, I'm really looking forward to seeing. Saying what he can, what he can, um, what what he can do if he's really given five to ten games in, in the team as a run, um, you know you're gonna have to, you know, rotation is important and you know take them out, you know, rest them, bring other players in, especially when you got when you've got a surplus of options, use them. But I'm, uh, I'm really pleased Jordan Jones has, has came in because he's, um, he's got, he's got, so he's got something that no one else offers as much as raw pace to run a place. Yeah, something I haven't, I haven't actually wrote on this list, but what do you think about the ongoing players, Dobson? Danny Graham, Will Grigg, Elliot Emmelton. Um, wait, Dobson, if he's not going to get game time, then loan him out. You know what I mean? Like, at least, you know, he can go. I think I've defended Dobson quite a lot. I think that's because he wasn't really, um, I, I, I didn't think he was getting used properly. I think he's, he's, a, re- he's a defender, he's a defensive midfielder. He's, he's not, he's, his game isn't going forward, but I think we've, we've tried to use him too much as a midfielder. Like, Get into the final third and create chances. It's just, just not what he does. If you look, you know, he got he won player of the season at Warsaw, being a defensive midfielder for a team that were pretty much sat on the edge of the box most of the season. And then um, his time as a youth player was spent mainly as a centre back. He only got, he only got pushed into defensive midfield at the age of seventeen. You know, he hasn't. He's, he's not really a midfielder to go forward. So I think I would like to say Dobson stay, but if he's not going to get game time, if Johnson decided he was going to play other players instead, then. Yeah, you loan him out. Um, hopefully, he gets game time Wimbledon, and he's probably going to be more suited to a side like Wimbledon, who are going to sit back a lot more and just look to soak up pressure and defend, um, as opposed to ourselves where we're looking to go forward a lot more. So, I'm I'm happy that he's he's he's, he's got loaned out. Really, if, you know, I would rather him get game time. And if, if we look, if we get a good offer from him in the summer, take it. But you know, I, I, I still, I, you know, I'm still going to say well, I think you know he wasn't used properly. Emelton was a funny one. I wanted him to, if, unless we were bringing someone else in, I wanted him to stay because he's, he's in attack midfield. We don't really have many, like, you know, number 10s, number 8s, attack midfielders. Like, to me, the cog between midfield and attack. I think Emelton's one of the only players who've got that both foot. There's, you know, great delivery. Um, we haven't really got many players that, as, as much as he hasn't impressed his absolutely loads, you know, it, if you're not going to bring in another attack midfield, I, I would have kept him. Um, but, you know, contract extension till 2022. Uh, Hopefully, yeah. that means that he's gonna. Um, ho- hopefully, that means he's gonna. Um, good. Hopefully, that means he's gonna get game time. He come back. He could be even stronger. And who knows? Maybe next season, if we're still in this division or out of it, because of his time at Blackpool, he can go on and kick on. Danny Graham, right time. Two words. That's all I'll say. It was. It was the right time to retire. Right time to step down. I can't believe he retired as soon as he left us, mate. Oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, he, he, had a, he had a good spell at Blackwood Rovers, so I didn't think it was the worst sign in the world when he came in. I, I would have preferred us to go for someone who was, you know, a, a bit of a different strike, a bit more pierced. But he's, um, he's, no, he's, um, he, he's, yeah, he, I, I didn't think it was a bad signing, but he hasn't hit the ground running as he since he came in. So, relatively pleased to see him, to see him gone. Um, 
as for the, the last outgoing <laughs> where Morgan, Morgan Feeney as well, wasn't it? He went. Oh, yeah, Morgan Feeney as well. Yeah, much, I, don't, I don't have much of an opinion on that, to be honest. I would have rather see him stay, but I think he wanted to go already, didn't he? Yeah. Well, Greg? Oh, that's what, um, yeah, he's, um, <laughs> I, 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 try, I try to avoid Will Greg, but uh, he's, he's, <laughs> to me, his time at Sunderland's done now. Um, you know, he, he said in that interview, you know, anyone who knows me knows that if you get chances, I will score goals. But funnily enough, mate, you've had about eight open goals since you've came to us and you've missed every single one of them. So you, you can't say that, you know. Um, I hope he goes to MK Dons as a great second half of the season, kicks on, comes back to Sunderland and, you know, maybe someone offer offer us a bit of money. I don't care how much it is because to me, he's time at Sunderland's done. He's got, a, he's got an awful attitude to work. He doesn't seem to work hard at all. Take what we can and get rid and forget the ever happened is, is my view on it. Yeah, what I kind of get was Greg actually on, I think it was a couple of days just before he signed, he said to you at the Athletic he didn't actually want to sign for Sunderland. Yeah, but we can we can force him out because the he, he needed he needed money. They needed money. I'm just thinking of when Johnson, you know, jo- well, at first Johnson actually wanted to keep him. But if, you know, Johnson put up and you know told clubs who, who wants him, but like you know, MK Dons came in for him, Shrewsbury came in for him, Wigan came in for him. But of course, yeah. MK Dons straight away. Yeah, I think but it was Shrewsbury, then MK Dons. Yeah, I think I think Johnson saw something in him at first, but to me, I, I couldn't work with Will Greg. It's his attitude for me. It just looks as if he can't be bothered, doesn't You know, as soon as things don't go his way, he just puts his head down and starts moping around. You, you want a player who's, when things aren't working, he's going to get fired up and going to start working harder and putting in those extra sprints. But he doesn't seem to be the guy to do that. He just kind of seems to do the very bare minimum and expect to have, have deliveries into the box every single game, fall perfectly onto his, onto his feet. And that's, that's not going to happen. So I can understand probably why Johnson's attitude's maybe changed as he's got to know him more. But I'm not saying that's what it is. I'm just saying that, that's potentially something that could have happened. Yeah, <laughs> I'll just take the drink there. <laughs> yeah because like you know like um you know when you came on and you know i said to you i use zoom quite a lot um i actually joined parlor talks uh where i talked to pilots from nearly all over but not nearly all over the world but uh i'm actually in a uni- uh, enthusiast group uh on facebook and you know, we talk to pilots from like America, all right, and all that stuff. It's um, we we just decided to do it through you know this lockdown. Yeah, you know, try to get it off our, you know, get it away from the thinking cup. <laughs> no, yeah, definitely. I think it's um, it's important to you know um, we. You know, if you can to, to try and stay in contact with people and you know if, if you've all got a common interest like uh, like pilots it's um it uh, you know it, it gives you something to talk about and something to, to connect over and it just it takes your mind off off the current situation you know for me it's you know it's football but it's it's any other thing any other thing as well that, that, that we can talk about and um you know it, it's good that if you know if people have got you know interests and in, you know the part of communities like yourself that um you know if, if, if you can you, you reach out and you you interact with people because it, it does as you say just it, it keeps you away from from just thinking about things all the time especially with the way things are at the moment there's not a lot we can control you know uh, we, we've just got to try and do what we can and and, and hope everyone else does and, and hope we can get out of this situation like as individuals that's all we can do yeah I think I think a friend of mine's coming along I'm not sure because I said I was doing a, a well not interview a video for YouTube but He's actually a, 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 not a Sunderland fan, but he's a fan of another club. Um, I think it's Swindon, I think it is. Because uh, uh, when I said uh, Will Griggs going out on loan, <laughs> they actually said, oh, can we have him? Uh, <laughs> I, was like, I, I was like... Uh, Take him off our hands. I was like, if you want him, you, you've got to contact uh, Lee Johnson. Aye. Uh, or uh, Christian Speakman. Mm-hmm. Aye, hopefully. Wait, I'm just, I'm just glad he's gone. To be honest. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting what we do in the summer. Uh, yeah, with all the players that we've got out of contract. 
yeah, there's there's going to be a lot that's um, going to there's going to be a lot that, that there's going to be a lot I think of players coming in because I think there's a lot of them I wouldn't even offer a contract to, but there's a lot that won't accept contracts because they want to be off elsewhere and it's difficult when you don't know what division you're going to be in. You know, you don't know you don't know how to plan. Um, yeah, that, that's it, what it, that's what Christian Speakman's doing now. He, he's got a plan, two plans actually, one for League One and mm-hmm. one for the Championship. He's already yeah, got that and, plan. Yeah, and I, I think what you've got to do at the moment is think, well, hang on, what players would be good enough for the Championship? Offer them a contract and put a clause in to say, if we're going to the Championship, this would be a contract for staying in League One, this would be a contract. Uh, and, you know, if players accept, they accept. But I think an important thing to remember is if players don't want to be here, then and you've got to let them go, you know, if, if, if they're not if they're not wanting to play for this football club, as, as far as I'm concerned, you know, it, it's it's no one else's responsibility, but they want to motivate themselves. And if people aren't really, if people feel the need to be motivated and people feel the need to, you know, oh, I'm going to try, then they aren't right for the club. You know, you've, you've got, you've got, you've got to have players like Luke Bonine who, who want, want to get up and work every day. You yeah. know, if, if you've got players contract, who kind of, actually. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would get that contract signed here. So if you've got players who are just kind of not really, um, not really interested in just kind of sticking along while they can, you've, you've just got to get gone. You really have. Yeah, there's one thing I like about Johnson as well. You know, Parkinson was actually afraid to bring the youngsters in, but Johnson isn't afraid to bring the kids through to uh, through to the first team. Depends if they're good enough, mate. Like. It's 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 what I think it's, it's one it's one thing saying give give the chip give the kids a chance but looking how how our under twenty threes did last, last season everyone was saying that they, were, they didn't even know how they were getting on they only had a point all season or something you know they were they were getting bad in every game um you know they, yeah but what, what I mean is you know Johnson good you know Johnson's took Oliver Younger everywhere he's gone has he mm-hmm. Well, uh, Oliver Younger really, Oliver Younger really impressed us. Like he's someone who I definitely give a shot to. You know, Diamond's been in the squad, well, with the squad nearly all the time. Yeah. You know, even Patterson, Anthony Patterson. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any need to drop Burge, but to me, he gets in above Matthews. Like I don't want Ray Matthews at all. Yeah, you'd be pleased when Matthews set the contract then. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's just to me, I, I can't see why Patterson doesn't get in above Matthews. He just he, he seems to make a mistake with every time. Every time he plays a game, he seems to make a mistake. It was, only, it was that game against MK Dons where he didn't, but that was, he, I think he only had a couple of shots on target against them or something. So, you know, he's he, if to me, if he's if you need him to make a save, he's not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it. You know, to me, just just give Patterson the chance. Like, yeah, the, there's one thing I, I I didn't like about Matthews. You know that the Burton game and um. Oh yeah, that big mistake there. I'm like, I was like, come on, Burge, come back in. Burge was actually on the bench as well, like him. Yeah. yeah, I think. Yeah, it was because like Burge got injured in the game before. I think. I'm not sure because the, the club didn't say. All oh, right, all oh, right. You know, it, you know, like for example, tomorrow it'll be interesting because you know, well, usually the day before. Uh, Lee Johnson usually tells about the, the media what team, uh, you know, what players are missing. But I think, to be honest, from Saturday's game, I don't think, I don't, I can't see many people, many changes. Um, no, I, I don't think it make many changes either, to be honest. Um, I kind of can't, I think I'll bring Jordan Jones in. I would potentially bring Dion Sanders in at left back. Maybe bring Scowan back in. I think that's about. I think that's about all I would change, to be honest. Yeah, because uh, even a lot of people are even thinking. Do you think Leopard needs rest? I think Leopard is one of one of the better players we've got. He does struggle with legs in midfield, but if you've got players around him who can support him, I would, wouldn't mind seeing him in a four three three with O Nine and Scowan next to him because then you've got the legs, but then you've also got O Nine who can really push on and actually do something in the final third, and then. Scout and just kind of be his legs defensively. So I think it depends on who you're playing next to Leopard. I just think I think you need to have something to do. He's running for him, and as long as you do, he's you know he's he's, he's caught near from the ball. He's, you know, he's he's too good to to not play. I think really if you, if you can find a way to fit him in. Yeah, because well, Johnson was actually hoping that Conor McLaughlin would have played 
for the under twenty threes today, but that game's been called off. They would have played Newcastle. Yeah, yeah, yeah I seen, I seen it got called off. Um, I wouldn't bring Conor McGregor in. Like, I, I, I think there's we've got too too much talent at right back. To I don't think Conor McGregor is too bad, but I don't see how he gets in above Power or Nine and Sanderson. I, I, he doesn't get in for me above them. Yeah, well, you probably know, but Michael doesn't like Conor McLaughlin. <laughs> yeah, because it's odd, because um, when we used to go to the games, you know, I, I used to go to every away game, but when I went to away game with Bowers, we actually lost. But when I went to away game with another friend of mine, we used to win. Aye. <laughs> There's the common denominator. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because I used to go to the games with Sean and Dino as well. Oh, right, I. Yeah, I, you know, like I went to Shrewsbury, uh, Portinson's second second game in charge, away away from home. We actually lost. Yeah, that's the clip when um, of that bloke who uh, after after the game and it went viral. I. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, because there was actually fights down Shrewsbury. Yeah, it was that was a, a tough day. I think it was a lot of people were just completely deflated at that point. Like, yeah, and you know, I, I went to a couple of away games under Jack Ross as well. You know, like for example, Sheffield United. I went yeah, down. I went a few under Ross as well. Yeah, yeah, I went down to Sheffield United under Ross. We actually won. We actually won one nil. Actually, um, no, Max, pa- okay. Max Power. I remember that night. Uh, it was a, it was a crap and goal, like, and then we just sat, sat out the rest of the game. Yeah, because that's when um, I'm trying to think. We had two de- debuts. Willis, was it Willis? I think Hamilton came in that game. Oh, it wouldn't have been his debut, like. Oh no, it was the that. Uh, what was his name? What's his face? Joe Lynch and um, yeah, the Le- Leeds left back. And Bur- Birch. Because I Dubok. think just oh the Dubo- yeah yeah I thought it was Love and Dubok, ah uh, Dubok and Bauer, yeah isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah Edmonton actually played that game as well. You what sorry? I'm sure Edmonton played that game. Yeah, he did. I think he got he got yeah to get taken off at half time because um, he was injured. I think. Uh, yeah, because when uh, Ross was taking ages to make us make a change. I was uh, while I was down there. I was keep shouting, "Ross, do a change because your 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 players are tired." And uh, yeah, two fr- two friends of mine that was st- beside us, they were just staring us like, "Whoa!" <laughs> oh, I remember that night. Uh, it was uh, it was, it was it was a good night that one. Yeah, and I went to uh, MK Don's actually on the Parkinson away, Lyndon Gooch. Oh yeah, I was there as well. That was a uh, that was a uh, yeah, an that- awkward game. I was yeah, in the game, but... I was in the top end of the of the stadium. Oh, really? That was um, I was like in the corner of me where Gooch scored. Yeah, I was you know where the flare was. I was at the top. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I was at the top of there. All right. No, I'm trying to think because I've been to a lot actually. I went to Bolton Wanderers under Chris Coleman. Parkinson was in charge of Bolton back then. Was that that was that we, we get beat, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Lee Camp was in goal. I, I remember that actually in birthday, I think I do. I, I I didn't go like, but uh no, I, I remember that one. That was that was poor as well. Yeah, that was my first away game. <laughs> no, <laughs> go on, we you get beat. Yeah, because I went I went to no. Went to a lot after that. I think, I think that was the first one under Coleman. Because it, it it's odd because you know, you know, Partington was in charge of Bolton when we when we had Chris Coleman. He was in charge of Bolton when we had Simon Grayson. On that the, the last night, Simon Grayson got sacked, three three draw. Yeah, I remember that. Partington was in charge of Bolton. I uh, I was he was he's in charge of Bolton for a while, like, but I don't think I don't think he's very liked by Bolton fans. Like, yeah, because it's odd as well. Lee Johnson was in charge of um, Bristol 
under when we when they came to the Stadium of Light under Simon Grayson. When we had Simon Grayson in charge. Yeah. Oh, it was Lee Johnson. I had been in one been about that time, yeah. Yeah, he was. I, I remember that game very well. I think I was I there. Yeah, I was in one of the games. I I believe it or not, this should shock you. I have actually walked out of one game. <laughs> I, uh, I think, and I think... I, I, I've, walked, I've walked out early a couple of times that maybe once or twice but I, I like staying right at the very even if I'm getting beat five I like to stay right at the very end I don't know why yeah the, the, I think the game I walked out I think it was under Simon Grayson I think it was Preston I think it was I think it was at the Stadium of Light I think it was um, but yeah, you know freezing cold yeah, it was. I was there for the. I was even there for the Celtic game as well. I actually stayed. I, 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 when they done the presentation, though, I left. Oh, as you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> I was. I was. On, I was on holiday for the Celtic game, like unfortunately, so I missed that. Well, fortunately, I guess you could say fortunately, I missed it really. Yeah, because on uh, the Monday before that, I was actually at the stadium. You know when they advertised. Um, to do the 20 on the pitch for the 20th anniversary of the Stadium of Light. I was actually on the pitch. All right, Connie. Yeah, there was loads of us. and Yeah, the, the, the club just, you know, they decided to take a photograph, uh, which is, I think it's on their Facebook. I think it is. Um, there's in the video as well, because Kevin Ball actually spoke to us uh, before we all went on the pitch. He said, uh, "Don't run on the pitch, don't uh, don't score a goal uh, while you're on the pitch. Just uh, just stand uh, in between the two and the zero. I was in the zero. All right, Connie. Yeah, because the photograph, um, I can't actually see myself because there was somebody actually on on the uh, on top of the stadium." Actually, lo- looking down, it was a, ph- a photographer. He was actually looking down, uh, actually taking the photograph. He was actually strapped strapped on, though, didn't worry. <laughs> oh, I mean, oh, I mean. <laughs> all right, all safe then. Yeah, because um, you know the the games I was, yeah, the games I was there for while well, the stadium I was there, Wolves. Uh, when uh, Robbie, one, three, no. yeah, Robbie Stockdale took the game. Yeah, that was like, that was like a canny game. It was a lot of hope, really. I think Donald just did just come in and um, yeah, Donald was actually at the game. Yeah, I think a lot of people thought. Um, yeah, it, you know, it was um, it was a, a lot of um, it was a lot of hope going in that game. A lot of people thought, you know, we're turning it around now. Yeah, I, I was happy with that result, mate. Like, yeah, because no, yeah, yeah. yeah, if you if you think um, Robbie actually gave Barley Mumba his actually debut that game, he yeah, took the captain of uh, John O'Shea. Aye. Uh, Ashley Fletcher played that game. Um, right, scored a goal, didn't he? A Jarvis yes, scored. I remember it was like a tap in, wasn't it? After it, it had a shot. Someone had a shot and then it got... I think it might have been Fletcher. Fletcher actually had a shot. Someone had a shot and then it got saved and Ajari was there. Paddy McNair scored. I'm sure, what? Was, I'm sure Paddy McNair scored that game. Yeah, yeah. He, he scored the last goal uh, after his left foot after he beat a few players. Yeah, no, no he's at he's um, Middlesbrough. Yeah, uh-huh. Um, yeah, he's... Um, he's, he's I, mean, I wish Paddy McNair the best. Like you know, he he, um, he, he did all he could, but uh, I think he, he he only got put in the team too late. And uh, it would have been nice to see him come down with with centre league one. But you know, you get you get the offer from the Championship club and uh, and you go, don't you? Yeah, I think it was Paddy's agent as well forced him. Yeah, as agents tend to do, you know, similar story, <laughs> similar story with Major. Yeah, because. Um... Well, for example, there, Joel Osorio's just left Swansea today. 
on a perm- on a permanent deal. Yeah, it was disappointing to see him go. I, I would have loved to see him come down. I think him and Maggi would have done tore up league. Well, as Maggi did, I think Osorio would have just made it even better. Yeah, I actually like Joel Osorio. Out of all the players, well, I actually had a kind of few from the from the Premier League, but I think Osorio was actually one of my favourites. Yeah, he was. I remember that season, the championship. He um, he was one of the the few Shannon Shannon Light Tree. Um, always always caused problems for the opposition, didn't he? Yeah, and just think, if only we kept Minoni, I think we would have stayed up in the championship. If only Vito Minoni stayed. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's fair. Um, just yeah, another friend of mine. Ain't. 